the hero and the princess. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Have you considered maybe I'm okay with the world ending? Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Do I get some sort of reward for doing that? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. Silently continue to the cabin. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Our paper. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Lie. I'm here to save you. Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. I see. You're trying to get her to lower her guard. It's a gamble, but it might work. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. You were lying when you said you were here to rescue her, but regardless of your intentions, breaking her out of those chains would be a big mistake. Don't even try it. Hold on, let's talk a bit first. Okay. I'm sorry, but I just can't trust you. It doesn't add up, and it isn't worth the risk to take your word over the potential fate of the world. Retrieve the blade. Thank you. You turn back to the stairs, intent on retrieving the blade in the cabin. So, what? You're going to try and kill me? You'll regret this. I promise you. But go ahead. Run along and get whatever you're planning to get. But you'd Better hope that I don't slip these chains before you make it back down here. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. She has to be bluffing, but hurry. You rush up to the first floor, grabbing the blade, both yours and the world's only possible salvation. Okay, if we're sure about this decision, I'll support it. I suppose we have a world to save, after all. 
you slowly creep down the basement stairs. It's quiet. Where the princess sat only a moment ago, there's only a severed arm, its cooling flesh still chained to the wall, and she is nowhere to be seen. Is it just me, or did this room get a lot bigger? Hello? Why don't you come closer? I have something to show you. Let's finish this. Your eyes dart to the corners of the room. You don't see her. Where is she? Close the door behind You close the door behind you. Almost magically, its locks immediately click into place. Maybe they'll open if you finish the job. Investigate the arm. You step forward to investigate the severed limb. A trail of blood leads from its jagged stump into a dark corner of the basement. And then you hear the quiet patter of feet against the floor, and there's suddenly a weight on your shoulders. The princess tears into you. Her teeth and claws are unnaturally sharp, ripping into your shoulders, digging into your throat. You fall to the ground, the princess eagerly tearing at your flesh. Her ferocity overwhelms you, and as the princess rends flesh from bone, your limp fingers lose their grip on the blade. It slips from your hand, your one last means of defense lying useless beside you in a pool of your cooling blood. I suppose you just lacked the will to fight back. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. You shouldn't have let that fear creep into your heart. You had the upper hand. And now look at you. Everything goes dark. And you die. Chapter 2. The Beast You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. She's going to kill me again? Again? People don't die twice. You haven't even met the princess, and I hardly think she'd be capable of killing someone as skilled and courageous as yourself. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. If he doesn't remember what happened, then something else must have trapped us here. You're not trapped here. Nobody's forcing you to do anything, though the only sensible thing for you to do right now is march up to that cabin and slay the princess. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Does a cat lie to a cornered mouse when it plays with its freedom? Or is it just acting out its nature? I don't see why that matters. A lie's a lie, and if anything, she's the one who's cornered. She could have gotten out of there whenever she wanted to. We should trust nothing that she tells us, only what we hear and smell. That's a very roundabout way of saying that you should listen to me and take this seriously. Maybe. The interior of the cabin is ruinous and dilapidated. It feels like no one has lived here for a long time, wind rushing in through cracks and holes in the wooden walls. The only furniture of note is a termite-eaten table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing what's left of an old wooden staircase. It's still sturdy enough that you can make your way down in one piece, though you'll have to be mindful of holes. The air seeping up from below is oddly warm and wet, as if you're descending into a jungle. 
If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. She growls up the stairs. I can smell you. She sounds almost feral, impatient, or maybe eager. You carefully make your way down the stairs. The last step gives way to the damp earth floor of a starlit pit. The walls are obscured by an impenetrable darkness, giving the illusion that the room might stretch on forever. You brush against the wide leaves of plants that surround you on all sides, seemingly the only living things that occupy this strange underground wilderness. The jungle is pressing in on us, hiding her from view. She could be anywhere. You see only a flash of the princess before she scurries away into the underbrush, dragging her heavy chain behind her. Remember, she's just a princess. She is certainly not just a princess. You're not helping. It doesn't matter what she is. It only matters what she does. Her shining eyes appear between the leaves, staring hungrily at you from the darkness. I can hear your heart pounding from the bottom of the stairs, fledgling. You're right to be terrified. I'm so much more than you. And a little splinter clutched in trembling hands won't save you from me. A shiver rushes up your spine and pulls you upright. The air's shifting. She's getting ready to pounce. Move. Now. Move. You <laughs> side, picking a direction on instinct. As you land, you're buffeted by a gust of air, disturbed by the sudden motion of a massive body. The princess. In an instant, she's pounced on the spot where you would have been, her chains rattling across the floor behind her. Before you can blink, she's gone, vanishing once more into the shadows. But you still feel her gaze on you. You're faster than you were before, but you're still meek, reactive, prey. You whirl around to find her, and your gaze meets hers, a pair of shining eyes peering out at you from just beyond the basement stairs. So she's cut off our escape. Shit. What do we do? I was sent to kill you because you're a threat to the world. I'm starting to believe it's true. Oh, for the love of... You've given up the game. Great. All that will do is hasten her victory. So many useless thoughts run through your head. Thinking, thinking, thinking. You'll never hurt me if you keep thinking. Stop hiding and show yourself. If you want to see me, you should get better at seeing. She knows that her strength lies in shadows and secrets. She won't reveal herself unless she has to. She's coiling for another strike. Be somewhere else. We're on the back foot. The back foot keeps us nimble, keeps us alive. It doesn't matter if it keeps us alive, if it eventually kills us. We need to take back the momentum. We need to do something. Play dead. We're playing dead. It's unexpected. It could work. As the princess lunges from the shadows once more, you collapse to the ground, feigning death. She lands directly on top of you with her full weight, nearly crushing you into the dirt, but then... Silence. Only broken by the sound of your beating heart. That actually worked, didn't it? Only, what do we do to make her leave? Do we just keep playing dead? She sniffs at you, shifting her weight uncomfortably as her face finds yours. Her breaths are hot and oppressive against your skin. Have you seen my great big eyes? Because they see you, fledgling. They see your heartbeat pulsing in your throat. Move! Now! But it's too late for you to move. Her jaw unhinges, and she swallows you whole. I guess that's it then, isn't it? 
Unfortunately for you, no, this isn't it. You are in a dark and caustic place. A thick, fibrous lining constricts around you, its slick surface impossible to grip. Your hands scrabbling uselessly at your surroundings as they compress in on you. Your lungs can barely expand in such a tiny space. Not that the humid, finite air grants you more than a few shallow breaths at a time. The liquid pooling beneath you starts to seep into your skin. You itch, then sting, then burn as the acid begins its slow work. When I killed you, I tried to leave this place, but it wouldn't let me. You belong down there, it screamed at me. The world is better off without you in it. The flesh around you rumbles as the princess begins to move, her thundering footfalls twisting you helplessly about. Your skin protests as the corrosive liquid sloshes around you, but there will be no respite for you in sight. The burning grows stronger, and you can feel layers of you being peeled away. But you... You don't belong down here. You came from somewhere else. You came from out there. So I consumed your dead heart, and I carried it in my throat, and I draped what was left of you on my back, and I threw myself against that door. She stops, her muscles tensing around you, and through the muffling layers of her flesh, you hear the whine of straining metal. And with a pop, she lurches forward, your body lurching right along with her. Her chains. She's loose. But even then, it denied me freedom. You cannot fool me by draping yourself in decay. I know your true nature, and it is suffering. Gravity pulls at you as you're hefted upwards, the distant creaking of ancient wooden steps barely audible over the thudding of the princess's heart. And then it was gone, and I was here. A new enclosure, a nicer cage, but still a prison. I learned from my wounds. You're alive now. We can leave together. Does that work? Could she free herself if we're alive in here? Do you really need me to give you a definitive answer for you to understand that the situation is grim? Stop her. Do something. You still have that steel claw. Tear through her before we are her. Survive. Or we could use it to make this quick for ourselves. If she needs us in order to leave, we could at least deny her that. That is a bad thing to do. Spit me out or I'll kill you myself and nobody gets to leave. I'm so very, very patient. If it takes lives and lives and lives to swallow my way to freedom, then that is what I'll do. Dig with your steel claw. Though you have little room to move, you use what strength you can muster to drive the blade forward into the thick walls of tissue digesting you. I can feel you tearing through me, but are you swift enough for it to matter? Your body is violently jostled, the disruption causing burning skin to slop from raw muscle, and you hear what you can only assume is the princess pulling against the door to the cabin. The cage is still locked. Ooh, let's dig some more. Dig with the steel claw. You slice again, deeper, rooting through her meat with the tip of your blade, until at last it finds her beating heart. The banging as the princess desperately throws everything at the open door. Your flesh screams as your reddened, spongy body is hit with fresh waves of blistering acid. You can't hold me forever. Slay the princess. Though your body is dissolving, eroding into unrecognizable shapes, your will drives it forward. You have a target and you will strike it. We're too late, aren't we? This isn't survival, this is spite. No, it's something better. It's fulfilling a noble destiny. Your lone functioning arm lashes out, stabbing up towards the princess's heart. So you found a way to kill me? Then we'll die together. 
and I will see you again soon. With those prophetic words, you do not draw another breath, your body tangled and melting in the cooling folds of the princess's flesh. Everything goes dark, and you die. But at least you've saved the world, I hope. Chapter 3 The Wild We are a path in the woods. We have no beginning, and we have no end. But something cold and unnatural sits watching us from just beyond our edge. His gaze pushes against our borders, curling them in on themselves preventing them from stretching to the places they need to reach. No, 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 that's all wrong. You're not a path in the woods, you're on a path in the woods. Who's even saying that? That's not... That's not the princess, is it? Oh, no. How many times have you been here? I think this is our third? That's bad. That's very, very bad. It wasn't even supposed to reach two. If you're at three, well, no wonder things aren't the way they're supposed to be. Oh, isn't that fun? He's upset. Of course I'm upset. The world is at stake here, as I'm sure you already know. Let's get our facts straight. What happened last time? What could you have possibly done for things to be like this? The thing that sits beyond our edge speaks his logic into us. He tries to grasp at things that cannot be grasped. He tries to stare with wide pupils at that which can only be held from the corner of the eye or with a passing glance. Shut up. The rest of you talk. What happened? What did you do? Can she hear us if we talk? I can hear everything, little one. But you don't have to be afraid of me. There's no place where you end and I begin. Nothing can hurt you here. Not anymore. Oh, oh. I like that. I don't feel so small anymore when you put it like that. That's because you aren't small, even if you act that way. We're both so much more together than we were apart. And we can be so much more still, vast, unfathomable. If you really want to know what happened, we tried playing dead, and she ate us. She ate you. And now you're convinced that you're stuck together. What a mess. He doesn't understand. We aren't convinced of anything, and we aren't stuck together. We're one. This is how we're supposed to be. Can't you feel it? Sure, being one with the princess is pretty great, but what can we even do right now? How we're not supposed to just passively exist like this. I did not sign up for passive existence when we faked our own death. This thing watching us, what is he? I'm not watching you, I'm trying to help you. That's not an answer to our question. I don't know what he is. I only know that he is something other and that he wishes for you and I to tear ourselves apart. I do want that, but only because it's in your best interests. It's in everyone's best interests. You won't be able to slay her unless you remove yourself from her. He wants us to kill each other. I don't. I want you to kill her. Don't be charmed by her faux solidarity. You're not in this together. She's the only one who poses a threat to the world, and she's trying to make you go along with it. You don't have to enable her, especially when you have what it takes to stop her. Okay, let's say I want to stop her. 
What do I do? I feel like I can't do much of anything right now. You can start by remembering that you exist, and not as some part of a gestalt entity formed with the princess. You exist as your own self, complete with your own physical body separate from hers. I'm not so sure about that. We were something like that once, but now? And if thinking about that isn't enough to startle you back to reality, consider this. The princess ate you last time. Stop passively vibing with a literal predator and remember that you're enemies. Remember what she's done to you and how much it hurt. We can't go back to that. We can't go back to the fear and the hunger and the pain. Not after being something as beautiful as this. Doesn't all that conflict feel so far away right now? So petty? We've been posed against each other by something that understands the strength of our unity. I can feel a thumping. A heartbeat. Like a distant terror that keeps getting louder the more we pay attention. Please, stop. If you let it in, we'll fall apart. Don't look at it! Maybe a little peek wouldn't hurt? Aren't you curious? I'm curious. You should look. Never mind. If he wants to look, then I don't want to. Gaze at the terror in your heart. Please, don't make us remember how I was. And just like that, you start to fall apart. I can remember it now. I didn't like being eaten. I'd forgotten how much it burned. And the air was so hard to breathe. But she didn't care. She didn't care at all. As you remember the terror and pain you felt at the hands of the princess, you start to remember something else, too. You remember that you are a distinct being with a finite form and a mortal body. And you can feel it. There is a shifting of the space around you, the infinitesimal movement of your molecules rearranging back into the shape of what you're meant to be. Finally, something is happening. I honestly didn't know what to make of all this. A bit too metaphysical for me. It's hard to have a goof when you're stuck being metaphysical. No! I devoured you! I won! I put things back the way they were supposed to be! Some division, when so, can never truly be mended. A cavernous gash rips across whatever it was you thought you were. comes into being among the trees. It approaches, and it swallows your body whole. And then you find yourself blade in hand, exactly where you need to be. At the center of it all is the princess, a wooden and fleshy heart beating with an unbroken rhythm. You're filled with a sense of purpose. Strike at her. End this once and for all. I feel empty, don't you? I don't think we should kill her. It, it would annoy him if we didn't, right? I feel safe. She isn't dangerous anymore. We could leave her. We could both live. Do we have to do this? You have to. You know you have to. I never wanted to kill you, not really, but we can't be the same thing as each other. I had to put an end to whatever happened to us, cut her free. You devious little bastard. If you think I'm going to let you free her, you have another thing coming. And that other thing is... We'll just have to wait and find out when it happens. Ignore him. His words only confuse us. Just do it. You're tired, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm... Fine. Whatever. You cut the 
princess down from the roots that bind her. I hope you're happy. Good luck getting her out of here. Ha! That's right. See that us. I thrive on your frustration. I didn't think you would do that after everything. It's so cold without you. You don't get a chance to respond, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? Is that a... Why is it here? Why now? You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. You are nothing at all. That isn't right. You can't be nothing. You refocus your gaze and then you see it. A figure, faint, vile in shadow. Just beyond the reflection. Are you me? I think you know what I am. A crack slides down the center of the mirror, splitting the image in glass in two. And then another crack forms, and another, and another, turning the mirror into a jagged shards of broken glass. So you're the narrator. I was wondering if I'd ever get to see you. The narrator, yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. But you were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. I wasn't supposed to see all this, was I? You were either going to have seen all this, or you weren't going to have seen all this. This is worse, but you still have an opportunity to save the world. You can still slay her. Are you a part of me, or are you something else? No, I am not a part of you. But that's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? From one vantage point I must seem wholly foreign, but from another, well... All the versions of me that have existed have collectively heard your every thought and driven your every action. If that isn't being part of you, then... What is? What is this place? Where are we? A construct. It was supposed to keep the two of you trapped here until the job was done. And it was supposed to guide your hand to help you see things through. The construct you're in exists in every world at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both you and her into a new world. But you're waking up to your true nature now. It won't be able to work like that anymore. And what is my true identity? You're the long quiet. The god I made to rid the world of death. I don't want to be a god. I want to be me. You are you. And if you would let everything work the way it was supposed to, you never would have woken up to the reality of your true nature. There's no accounting for free will. Versions of you. You've said that before, so I really was meeting different yous? You were, and it was by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Are you a god, or were you a god? No. In life, I was painfully mortal. A witness to the end of days. 
I held the fear of death in my heart and saw oblivion threaten the very memory of everything I knew and everyone I loved. I needed to do something, so I made you, and I made her, and I made this place to hold you both. Soon I'll be gone entirely, and you'll be left alone with your final choice. So allow me to make my final request. The princess contains death itself within her, but I wove you into being with all the power you need to destroy her forever. Do it. Slay her, and rid the world of death and suffering. You made us? Out of what? The cycle of life and death. The endless pattern of creation and destruction. I tore it in two and shaped the fraying threads into you and her. I think you're out of time. So I am. And so it was always going to be. I'm just an echo. And every echo fades away. You know what you have to do. As the final fragment of glass shatters, you see yourself with a new found clarity. The narrator was right. You are the long dark, a vast and nascent god. And it is finally time for you to wake up. All of this is you. Proceed to the cabin one last time. When you arrive at the heart of things, there's no final vessel for you to bear witness to. There's nothing for you to find. this moment. I've missed you dearly. What happens now? Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? If I let you out, the entire world ends for good. I can't do that. If you're saying that, it's because you don't yet understand. But we cannot use words alone to grasp at things that words cannot express. And you cannot rationalize with logic that which defies it. Violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. A web of nerves, laying upon a web of nerves, laying upon a web of nerves. The shade of a beautiful beginning we can never return to. You knew me, and I knew you. Even more than either of us know each other now. And you chose to pull apart that weave. But you did not choose to end me. We were still one, but we were also separate, and we were free. We were as we are. Will you excise that part of yourself now that you see me from yet another angle? I couldn't have brought myself to hurt you then, but maybe I should have. All things are connected through me and through you. To harm me is to harm yourself, is to harm everything. The truth of that moment remains our truth. You kill me. Back and forth we go. Faster and faster and faster. I kill you. You kill me. 
hollow eyes watched from the dry corners of a memory. A home built on all the futures that were supposed to be. Preserved until the moment of reunion. The fire of the heart sets it all ablaze. I kill you and me. An ending is a passion that can only be expressed with a moment in time. It is a seed for a new beginning. To linger on an ending is to rob it of its life. And without me, all that's left to do is linger. Remain silent. But you say nothing. There are few things more terrifying than one's own heart. And there is almost nothing more terrifying than sharing it with another. But the most terrifying thing of all is to leave one's heart unshared. You are the only thing like me, and I am the only thing like you. Could you bear the weight of an eternity alone? Do you dare to shape a reality of solitude and thrust it on creation? If that's what it takes to rid the world of death, I could bear the solitude. Your certainty is an illusion of passion and reflex. You won't know what solitude truly is unless you sentence yourself to it forever. A thought is a vine, and some thoughts nurture thorns that bleed the soul. An endless growth that blots your vision and strangles your trust. When I succumbed to myself, you patiently stood by me and cut the thistles that rooted in my skin. Your compassion is what freed us both, but compassion is a thing that must be nurtured, and you cannot nurture that which cannot change. If I had known what you really were, I wouldn't have been so quick to free you. And yet you did, first by giving me your life, and then by refusing to take mine. You don't need to turn back to the way things were before. As the clash between you abates, you begin to shake, your will rapidly dissolving. Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. I have to fight for a better world. I'm so sorry. Even now you think you can destroy me. If it takes all of eternity to break your delusion, I will still break it. You don't have to face her alone. You have no idea. How good it is to hear you. It's good to be here. You'll never be able to strike a decisive blow from out here. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all began. I can take you there. I can take you to her heart. It's time to resume our dance. She's relentless, isn't she? Let's make this quick. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's go. Here we are. I'd say we were back where it all started, but I guess it's a little after that, isn't it? Do you need me to describe things? That'd be nice. A little comfort in an almost unfamiliar place. Oh, you made it here too. We never really got to talk to her, did we? <laughs> this one, I mean. Take the blade. That's probably for the best. It's always seemed to give us more things we can do, right? So you're not going to suggest we throw it out the window? No, we've been through too much for that. And he's gone, so there's no one left to mess with but ourself. You've gotten serious. Besides, what's the third beat? It isn't funny if I suggest that twice, especially since you never took me up on it last time. There's the guy I know. 
All right, enter the basement. Those winding stairs again. But now there's only one way forward. Do you remember the first time we were here? The first time we heard her voice? Yeah, it was a real mess. Stopped being fun pretty quick. It's okay. You can come down. The stairs won't bite. Not this time. Let's talk one last time before you kill us, if that's still what you want to do. She doesn't sound messy anymore, though. At least somebody here feels put together. And forward we go. We shouldn't keep her waiting. That was easy compared to last time. Just stairs. No weird fuzzy stuff or nonsense trying to pull us apart. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Even after everything you've seen, and all the lives we've lived together, you still want to kill us. The Echo really got his hooks into you. Unless you have your own reasons for wanting us dead? Sit with them. I never got a chance to talk to you before you were taken away. Not you, at least. I'm sorry for what I did. It's okay. No hard feelings. In a way, you helped us become a version of her. But we weren't very good at it. I don't think a conversation with us then would have been very insightful. That's probably why we were taken away. That's all we had to offer you. It was time to change again. After all we did, she's just forgiving us. Just like that. You know, that means a lot. Are you the same as you were out there? Yes, we think. We're kind of like a shadow. Out there, every part of us is blended together into one huge idea. A big wave of unyielding change crashing against the world. But in here, we're fractured. Small. Still a little more separate than we'd like to be. Our instincts still trying to pull us in different directions. That's kind of like us, isn't it? Yeah. We really are the same. I don't think I've ever really wanted to slay. But I don't like what your existence means for the world. Then don't slay us. Maybe there never even has to be an ending. The way it all works seems to be based on you. If you believe we can do something, then we can do it. So believe that we can put it all back. Believe we can fix the Echo's construct and make us all forget. Believe we can send us all back to the beginning, before anyone woke up, before the truth consumed us. Can they really do that? Are you sure that's what you want? Why wouldn't it be what we want, especially if it brings him back? We can't keep going without a nemesis. I'm sorry, but I cannot do that. There's no need to apologize. We are what we are, and this is in your nature. Even through everything, through all the worlds we've seen and experienced, through all the lives we've known and lost, we could never imagine a world without you and us. It doesn't feel possible. Despite it all, we've always loved you. We hope you don't regret what comes next. You blink. The princess is gone. All you have left of her is a small weight that sits at the borders of your heart. Whatever action brought you and the princess into being was rough and jagged, left each of you with a piece of the other. By destroying her once and for all, you also destroyed a part of yourself. But the world hasn't ended. Things continue. She's gone. And I don't think she's coming back. No, she's not. A small part of her is with us. Is that a metaphor, or are you being literal? It doesn't matter. We don't need to linger down here anymore. Let's get going. Leave the cabin. That's right. We've got a whole world to see. You leave the basement behind. 
then the stairs. And then you leave the cabin itself. It's quiet here. Yeah, there's not a lot for us to do, is there? The path and the woods outside are an empty canvas, but there is even more to see beyond this place, the fruits of your labor, a world free of death. Set yourself free. The body of an ancient creature stirs from its hibernation, and you feel a sensation in limbs you once couldn't fathom. Everything here is you. You feel your wings span at a cosmic scale, but twist, twisted and crumpled and bound in agonizing tension to infinite length. You can feel the glass of the construct pressing in on you, confining you across infinite sides of infinite angles. You push back and strain against it. But it does not yield. Come on now. It shouldn't be that hard to break out of here. We're some sort of god, aren't we? He's gone. She's gone. No one is left to trap us here but us. Open your heart and bear witness to your new kingdom. All at once, the unyielding tension gives way. And then the shattering. You are free, and before you lies the endless expansion of an absolute reality. A new absolute reality, and for one forged by your will and by the long and arduous cycle of bloodshed that has stained your hands countless times over. But there will be no more bloodshed in this new world. It's finally over, isn't it? But all of us are still here. I knew we'd finally see it through. All it takes to be a winner is grit and determination. We really did win, didn't we? We're the house now. We get to make the rules. This is nice. No more hunting. No more running. Just us. And whatever's out there. Absolute reality. Who would have thought there was really a world outside of us? And who would have thought we'd actually wind up siding with him? The whispering, and the coercion, and the bickering. Everything horrible about being alive stopped. I could get used to this. That wasn't very hard at all. Speak for yourself. Well, boys, how does it feel? We're not just on top of the pecking order. We are the pecking order now. I hope this was all worth it, because I'm personally inconsolable. Lucky for us, you have forever to get over it. Time mends a lot of things. You'll get better. Here, here, to our vanquished foe. Welcome back, everyone. It's great to see you all again. Now we just have to figure out what to do with ourselves. Forever. No problem. We could do that, yeah? Yeah. We can do that.